Good afternoon, Ross. Good morning, all. Welcome to another session of miniature painting. We're joined today by uh, Ross Bedcup and Penny Smith. Morning, guys. Good morning. Well, good afternoon, in Ross's case. Um, I apologise for the dog-like squeaking in the background. The new puppy is doing some training, apparently. At least I think that's what's going on. And the noise is very piercing, apparently. At least this microphone likes it. Um, what we've got is sitting on the bench is the results of last week's um some orc now are they orc spearmen are they orc spear orcs <laughs> we're all about the big questions but um yeah quick paint job they've come up nice they go well with the rest of the army because the rest of the army's basically red and metal um yeah i did start on the second unit during the week but i didn't get very far the week has been somewhat frantic um for today um we're going to paint a museum scale interceptor just because i think wasn't any specific reason, was there, Ross? Uh, I think we established that it, it exists because you can. Yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to. So what I need to do, I very hurriedly taped it up this morning and put the, the highlight colour on, but um, my masking skills aren't what they need to be. So, we need to touch it up before we get going. So, has the weather turned there yet, Ross? Um, we're supposed to get about two inches of rain over the weekend starting later tonight, so it's on the verge. But this morning, we have a noticeable smell of smoke in the air. Mm. Do you, when you get these large rain bands coming through, are they associated with a thunderstorm or? In the Pacific Northwest, um, you don't have the uh, real dividing line between really hot weather and really cold weather like you do in the Midwest. And, that sort of thing. Uh, so we very rarely get thunderstorms. We get unsettled weather. But you know, you get jet stream moisture coming in, and you know, it's like this weekend it'll rain straight for you know, two or three days. Right. The reason I asked about the thunderstorms is, is that in Australia, well, in Melbourne in particular, we get fronts come through with thunderstorms. Um, you get those lightning fronts so the the lightning bands come with the front of the rainstorm and that sparks fire usually so when it's been hot and dry and you get the change come through you get fires because the the lightning sets off the dry grass before the rain yeah side of the Cascades where we are, but it's more likely to happen on the west side. Right. Where, uh, it's a much drier climate. Yeah. But uh, no, one of the stories uh, this morning regarding fires is, I guess one of the fires in California is getting closer and closer to uh, historic stand of redwoods no. so they've started at least for some of the for the largest tree i think one of the largest trees in the world named general sherman mm -hmm. wrapped it in place in aluminum foil to try and protect it as the fire uh, encroaches so sad to see that kind of thing 
Yep. It's. I don't want to get political, but um, we were having this debate in the car when we were on our epic journey to go and pick the puppy up, which was three and a half hours into country Victoria and then three and a half hours back again. Um, we we're talking about the fact that in Australia at least, fire is just a natural part of the ecosystem and that there are some varieties of plants, trees in particular, that don't actually germinate unless they're burnt. And so they need the fire in order to be able to reproduce. Like the Victorian or the Southeast Australian mountain ash is one of those things. Um, and we put out all the little fires. And so what happens is the only fires they get are the ones we can't put out, and they're the big ones. Well, we have a decades long history here of believing that, yes, every fire has to absolutely be squashed before it can do what nature intended. Mm. And this had the side effect of creating years and years worth of underbrush that dried out and died and piled up. That's, you know, that's the fuel that's uh, making these huge uh, yep. operations that we're fighting here. Yep, and that's the thing. So that You'd, you'd normally get several fires a season go through, but they wouldn't be big ones. They'd clear out the, the underbrush, and that'd ensure that the ones later in the season wouldn't be big either, because they wouldn't have any fuel. If you're continually putting them out, the fuel builds up. Anyhow, it's a political topic, so I should just move on. What's on your painting desk, Ross? It hasn't moved. It hasn't moved. Uh, though I did get outside the last couple of weeks and uh, repairing the tractor and uh, some, uh, repaired the brick wall. I just recall that was a major accomplishment last week. Those two things weren't linked, were they? Uh, no. <laughs> Good. Uh, with all of the craziness that's going on in supply and demand and logistics these days, my contractor neighbor. to dump a 20 yards of dirt. Right. And uh, I said, yes, no, I can always use it. And uh, while he was at it, he brought over his uh, tractor and we repaired a stone wall that had fallen down a couple of years ago. Okay. The stone wall is made up of basalt chunks and uh, two, three, four hundred kilos. Right. The substantial bits of stone. Yep. So that's good clean fun trying to fit those together like uh, you know, like Legos. Yeah, that would be okay if you've got something that's capable of lifting them so that all you need to do is shove them around. Well, my neighbor is very adept at uh, controlling the Controlling the machine and uh, do things that uh, I would never attempt to with, uh, you know, with loads, with heavy loads. Mm -hmm. That's a case of practice. What's your plan here for this uh, piece? Um, Just copying the scheme of the. Uh, I, I was copying James's scheme to some degree. It's actually reasonably difficult to tell what it is in the picture because of the lighting and the angle. So I'm kind of just making it up as I go along. I tried. I've got some very bright yellows, but I tried to dull this one down a little bit, make it a, a, a more orange. So it's actually got a, a 
metallic uh, a gold mixed in it to give it a warmer color Oh, you're all. Well, yeah, you know. But you're all very polite people, so I'm not. Yeah, that's right. Biting the hand that feeds and all of that. Have you decided which one you want? Is the bolt? Yeah. Or should I help? Or should I hold out for the uh, for the one to come with the uh, with the movable canopy? <laughs> Who said anything about it being movable? <laughs> That's the logical, that's the logic, next logical thing, is <laughs> oh, You've gone from open to movable. <laughs> no, I'm just, you know, when you try and figure out how it's open and how it stays open, I, you know, we quickly discovered that maybe the mechanics of our designs don't work. Something to be desired. Yes. <laughs> I did want to have a conversation to Steve Venters about some of those tanks, going, you understand that? <laughs> this doesn't work. But, uh, I dare say he's well and truly beyond that particular conversation. I'm still in awe of the things that he managed to be able to do in two dimensions. Yeah. So, can I dig into some history? Is that okay? Sure. Okay. You, you, it's always a memory test anyway. You can, you can just say no. If I ask a question you don't want to answer, that's fine. Um, the original interceptor that was the attempt to garner the Star Wars license? No, it no? was after our failure to acquire it. Right. This is what we would have done. Okay. So you'd already just put a pitch in for it and somebody else had got it. Was West End Games got it? Was it? Yes, I believe so. Hmm. And was that a, a size thing? Like company size thing? Were they a bigger company or did they just have a better uh, pitch or do you actually know? Uh, I don't know if that's 100% true or not. Uh, I 
don't know precisely how close we came, but I think I, 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 my, my recollection is that we were very close to getting mm -hmm. a day or two. Yeah. Yeah, and then went, okay, so this is what we would have done. So, how did it work? Was it Who was the idea factory, or was it just the three of you bouncing off each other and coming up with ideas? The world. Um, a lot of the time. Go on. You know, like the game, and if you look back, I would say, not, let's, not just, let's not say a lot of the time, the vast majority of the time, the game starts with an image. With an idea, with a picture. Yep. Um, and, and we go from there. Um, you know, BattleTech started with Jordan's discovery of these little imported plastic model kits. Right. Everything went from there. Um, Shadowrun, you know, started as that cover image. Showed all of the things that we wanted to uh, that we wanted to uh, highlight in the game. It didn't start with the Elmore though. Hmm? It didn't start with that Elmore image. No, but but Jordan was excellent at uh, creating the imagery. embodies the game. Crimson Skies was the same way. We and Dave McCoy developed this imagery for this uh, game, you know, for this uh, uh, intellectual property. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, once that was set, everything else flows from that. Right. And you can't ignore the serendipitous nature of all of this stuff. And we've just lived an example of this. Mm -hmm. you know, we're talking, you know, exchanging pictures of extraordinary aircraft. I sent in one of the Blackbird with the canopy open. Mm -hmm. uh, you were experimenting with your 3D prints and the models you've been banging your head on for the... Oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's getting close to a year, right? <laughs> Yeah, we we've come up with plenty of that's not cool at all too, though. Let's, I mean, nobody's perfect the first time. Every time, I mean, the thing that uh, is lost in, from the good old days is all the stuff that ended up on the floor. You know that doesn't work. Throw it over the shoulder and work on something that does. I made a joke yesterday. Um, I was informing my colleagues that I was going to the optometrist to, to go and get a new set of glasses. It's been four years. Um, I made the wisecrack that uh, I was going to get my rose-tinted lenses mended. Nobody seemed to get the joke. But it, that's very apt here in that everybody looking back on Battletech only sees the stuff that actually got to mark. And even some of that's relatively poor. There's some, there's quite a bit of derision about some of the early artwork. Cranston Snords, you know, the... Again, you uh, are, remember uh, early on we were a company that did licensed games. Mm-hmm.
with the artists that you can find and afford at the time. Mm -hmm. As time yeah. moves on and you can afford an Elmo cover, well, <laughs> good for us, but before then. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, we're in the same situation now. It's like we can't afford, you know, a, a 200 man production house to put together our artwork. We just can't afford it. Yeah, we, we talked about this quite early on in the process about needing a cover for the game that leapt off the shelf. Like, you know, the game leapt into your arms and says you're not leaving the shop without me type stuff. And that's what that cover was. It was like, there just wasn't anything else comparable to it on the shelf at the time. And the, the colour scheme was... I don't know who came up with the colour scheme. I imagine it was probably several conversations and round robins and stuff like that. But that, that final colour combination of the, the red, the black and the yellow was just spectacular. It just it really set it apart on the shelf. So how, it, I guess it's a very difficult question to answer, but I imagine once Battletech really took off, the company grew quite quickly. Did that endeavour make money in the end, or not? Um, our big payout came, and you know, came when FASA Interactive was purchased by Microsoft. Right. Okay. But that was it took a long time. ten years in the making, wasn't it? The deal? Yeah. Yeah. More than that, but yeah. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the three owners being what, you, Jordan, and Mort. Correct. Yeah. So, how come this might be a top G subject? So, just say move on. But, how come Jordan gets all the credit for Battletech and you just get ignored? He's a people person. Yep. It's a bit of a disappointment from my perspective. Not that I've ever met Jordan, so I you know, can't speak to what he's like as a human being. But, uh, you know, <laughs> you... <laughs> In the modern Battletech discussions, you and Sam barely make a footnote. Well, I mean, that's, that's the way it goes. Mm. And, you know, in the modern discussions, remember that he has gone back into it and uh, created the positive and that sort of thing. Yeah, he also did the clicky stuff. You know, that's, you know, that's the way it goes. I know... I know that FASA would not have succeeded in any of its endeavors without my, without me being Yeah, sure. So. It, it, it was a team game, right? It, this, oh, yeah. you can't do this one person. I did, doesn't hobby products show that? That it's not possible to do it with one person alone? Well, this is the thing, and, and this is why it was such a surreal experience for me, sort of this time last year, was because I've been reading your name in everything for a very long time. So, that, um, it, it, it came with its own degree of surrealism, that's for sure. Just imagine. <laughs> I really can. Wait, that's not supposed to be able to happen. <laughs> That's where things like the Hunchback would have come from. It's like, right, what's the... Where's the line yep. that we want to draw? Yeah. And yeah, they're the kinds of problems Todd's facing at the moment with the designs for Interceptor, or this version of Interceptor.
Right. Because there, you know, there you are sitting in the in the cockpit with all the blinky lights, all the buttons work, and you know exactly what they do. And, uh, playing with the programmers who designed it all, yeah. testing out their latest uh, tweak to the system. And, uh, you know, it's just a blast. How many people at a time could play? Eight. Eight. So four on four. Or, and especially in Red Planet, every man for himself. Oh, right. And, you know, courses were named after people and, and uh, techniques were created, slang created based on what was happening in those games. What year was that? We're looking uh, early 90s, I guess. 91, 92, 93, that sort of thing. Yeah, 92, 93. Right, eh? Circus, Im was all about. Circus Imperium in Mex. Uh, just about, well, in Hoverprint. Yeah, right. <laughs> So you guys were what, in your 30s? Late 30s, uh, early 40s? Early, early 30s at that point. Oh, early 30s, yeah. It just would have been a riot. spouses <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that just goes with the territory yep. Yep. so you guys were doing that as I start was starting my first job I never got to play in one of those consoles So you're telling me this? <laughs> you're still telling me it's possible. Yep. Uh, the dreamer in me would like to play interceptor in them. Yeah. 
Yeah. But you could have something like the Red Bull Air Races with guns. seen that is that sort of something that would be available on YouTube or something yeah it's on YouTube somewhere righto created a problem for myself. I washed the miniature, now I have to wait for it to dry. This isn't compelling viewing. The conversation certainly is though, so don't sweat it too much. Um, I'm just glad to be sort of given the opportunity to ask the questions. Thirty years later. That's a terrifying number, isn't it? Uh, only if you think about it too long. Don't think about it at all. Just remember the stories. Right. Have you been looking at any of the stuff that's happening in Gen Con this year? There's always this probably, probably a good time for the folks that are actually there. There's always a silver lining, right? You wonder well, I'm sitting here wondering whether or not those big conventions are gonna be more and more virtual as time goes on. creates its own set of problems. I 
still have a shot card from you know, my younger days, so it's not something, anything new. No. What's, um, what's deeply concerning about that is, is that we had a case in New South Wales yesterday or the day before where it was a, and I don't know the exact age, but it was sub-20 fully vaccinated person died. So, doesn't guarantee anything. Mm-hmm. Is great at bringing out the exceptions. Yeah, <laughs> because it's the exceptions that makes them money. So, moving on from that, how much gaming do you actually get to do? With people. Well, no, just in general, like, obviously. I spend more time on my phone or on my pad than is probably healthy. Right. Playing games. And playing games. Yeah. And I finally got to play a game I bought at Gen Con a couple of years ago when two nephews visited for a long weekend for the summer. What was that? Uh, City of Big Shoulders. Never heard of it. It's a classy uh, build and trade stock market game. Oh, okay. The kind of thing I would be absolutely terrible at. <laughs> I was having a conversation with a mate of mine on the phone yesterday, and, and he's ever so slightly obsessed with Flames of War um, and he just can't go past what he perceives to be a bargain it doesn't matter whether he needs it or or previously figured out whether he wanted it or not what, but, and, and this is the aside that's yeah. what's so great about the market these days is because guys like you yeah. in particular have the wherewithal to do that yeah. and that's great for a struggling game company <laughs> but carry on whether he needs it or not he was cool, he, exactly and he was he was bemoaning the fact well he wasn't really bemoaning he was just noting the fact that that he didn't need this stuff it was just a uh a, a whim purchase <laughs> made the somewhat acidic observation at the time that I wasn't the person to be talking to about fiscal responsibility. Having just... I don't know. I don't want to consider... I don't even want to add it up, but, you know, I visited <laughs> three different gaming companies yesterday and made significant purchases at, at all of them. <laughs> that well, and, I, and I know that you asked about the Samsung because Matty's sitting there listening and he's got his uh, yeah. 1879 armies slowly being created. Yeah, right? that's right. Very slowly, but yes. Uh, I think this this I think there's two real powerful demographics and I, you can correct me if i'm wrong here ross because you probably know more about this than i do but but you're talking about the 11 to 19 year olds and then males over 40. <laughs> i am surprised at how many uh, late teenagers i know kids going up to college Mm-hmm. Because finally they will be around a whole bunch of people instead of just the one or two friends who game. Who do tabletop gaming. Yeah. And that's heartening. Yeah. Uh, so we've got them so that when they do graduate and raise their families and 
get their well paying jobs and then finally decide, you know, discover that they've got time once again to uh, to get back into it. I don't know that I've discovered that I've got time, Ross. <laughs> but you make the time, right? you make the time. <laughs> I am. I'm set at a fair few other things aside to indulge this particular passion. You're looking good there. Yep. Panel highlighting. Can't do that on the little ones. Well. I'm probably going to go digging through my spare decal box. But that's still good. Mm hmm. I don't want to paint numbers by hand. Have you seen the way my hands shake? Let's call it uh, uh, lag in the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're a very kind person. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you could be gaming today, what would you be gaming? Um, if you could have a, a group of people over. I would love to play uh, a, big, a big battle of either Demon World or 1870. Yeah. Using the version 4 rules, naturally. Problem of the Founding Father. Well, I sincerely hope one of these days that uh, I can make it over to your continent and that uh, we Yeah, but it's. Yeah, it's that, that sincere wish to be able to sit down for a significant period of time, hours, across the table and push the miniatures around it. Chew the fat, shoot yep. the moon, yeah. Well, we want to do that, uh, you know, you're, you're starting to do that with these sessions, and once we get uh, live play for Interceptor, we'll be doing the same. Yeah, it, it isn't the same, but I, I get nope. your point. So, yeah. Um, so a few things to do between <laughs> between now and then. <laughs> well. Yep. Good stuff. Thanks, Ross. I appreciate the fact that you're actually candid. That's you know I could I, I fear that I'm going to ask some difficult questions one day, and you're just going to have to demur. Mind. Yeah. But uh, no, we're we're proud of uh, of what we've done and what we've accomplished, and you know, this is a chance to uh, you know show off a little bit. So. It just annoys me that you and Sam get left in the shadows. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, attempt any. Uh, 
application for public relations that you wish to attempt? I, I don't think I can make a difference. I, I'm not a politician. I'm not a marketer either. So I think maybe we should just let the next set of products do the talking. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for stopping by. My pleasure. And uh, as I said, looking good. I look forward to the, uh, the finished result. Yeah. You have to. You have the to final touches. One. Yeah, you have to tell me what color scheme you want for your bolt. And again, uh, based on your efforts of the last week, Leviathan, Leviathan is going to look spectacular. Yeah, I agree. Already. Thanks, Ross. See, See ya. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Wasn't that just fantastic? It's a wonderful thing. Yeah, for me, it's very much a privilege just to be sitting on the sideline for something like that. Oh, and, and it's such a privilege for me sitting in the seat. You know, childhood and adult heroes. Mm-hmm. Question is, can you see the edge highlight? Is it actually making a difference? I'm <laughs> wasting my time. No, I can see it going on. And it definitely makes a difference. It's a time, Eddie. 8.53 There's still an awful lot of ink that hasn't dried that I'm st still dodging Stands to reason So I ordered some of me, ordered some of those uh, six-legged cavalry. Oh, yeah, those look nice. If I can be perfectly candid, that, that that's my one big problem with 1879 as a War Games product line. Which is? One faction has got utterly unpronounceable names. Yes. That's all. Okay. There's a note. We'll produce a pronunciation guide. Yeah, kind of desperately needed, I think. <laughs> well, you've listened to my podcast. We haven't touched the same sort all that much, but... I remember distinctly my first time out trying to even pronounce Samsud. <laughs> mm-hmm. What didn't make it into the episode was the 30 seconds of me stuttering over it just to make sure I got it right. <laughs> I'm sure James would have an opinion if he was here. Well, yes. It's one of the things that I need to get around to is to... <laughs> testing the current set of U18 rules with some 1979 figures. Mind you, I still need to do play testing with Demon World figures. So. Mm. 
there aren't enough hours in the day, they're just not. How are your boots going? Finished. Happy with them? I finished just before Ross left. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with them. Less happy about the uh, state that they got into in the week since I last polished them. Chalked up but some miles. But if you've miles. got a strong base polish, it doesn't take that long to bring a spit shine back. Mm -hmm. Do you use any specific technique? I use variation of spit shining. So it's uh, cold water, cotton balls, and kiwi glass parade. Right. And lots and lots of pinched fingers and tiny, tiny little circles. Takes a little while when you wear size 14 boots. <laughs> But uh, if you get a new set of boots and you spend two or three or four hours just really, really bringing them up to standard for the very first time, every time after that is significantly easier. Mm -hmm. I watched a YouTube of a guy doing that in the British Army. Oh, they have some wonderful ways to polish boots. Mm. No, I'm not one for heated spoons and cigarette lighters. No. No, he no was... way. If, if I was in the British Army, I'd be uh, off to the nearest RAF base for a can of tornado nose cone paint. Right, okay. <laughs> he was actually cold polishing. So, very much what you just described. And he made the same observation. If you get the shine up the very first time, if you do it right the very first time, every time after that, it's significantly easier. It is absolutely true, and it is absolutely the first thing you should do to any new black leather footwear you get. Even just the tips, you know. I'm afraid I don't wear any. I'm a runner's kind of guy. Fair enough. So one of the things that Ross was alluding to was we're going to start doing playtesting sessions for interceptor remotely so you're welcome to spectate on those too if you want to well yeah if I'm welcome to I would be welcome I guess uh, that doesn't sound quite right um, yes I would like that hell I would offer to play test if if that were needed as well, if another virtual body was needed. Well, yeah, just somebody else making decisions. See, I'm I'm a miserable solo play tester because they cheat terribly. Make it up in my mind which side I want to win. <laughs> Make sure that side wins. It's just it's ridiculous. Yes, I remember my early forays into wargaming as a teenager oh boy none of my friends played my particular game right <laughs> they all uh, got upset when I bought something different I could never get any of them to play with me sounds like 
somebody bringing infinity miniatures into a 40k club. Oh, it was a 40k club. Yeah. It wasn't infinity, though. No, in truth, we ended up spending more time playing pool than playing yeah. other things, toy soldiers. Because a green felt pool table makes for a wonderful grassy field. That was actually one of the things I was going to do in this house when we moved into it, was I was going to buy a pool table and then get a cover and have the take the cover off when we had guests and just have it as a pool table but then put the cover on it and use it as a wargaming table but I discovered that a, a decent mid-sized pool table is well and truly beyond my means Oh look, we've got spammer bots sitting in our channel. Nice. Do you want to become famous? Buy followers, primes, and viewers on a website I'm not going to name. Nope. I do not. Thanks, bots. Who wants to be famous anyway? With fame and success come bigger headaches. Don't have to be famous to be successful. Well, I suppose that's true, but I was talking about fame and success as a pair. Although for any given quantity of fame, I'm not really sure how much success there is. Mm -hmm. Hello, reality television. How are you this morning? So what's wrong with the rest of your day? Editing? I do need to spend a couple hours editing, but I'd also like to finally finish the bases of uh, some of my Isthak. Right. I'm not entirely sure how I want to do it. I've got uh, polyfiller all over the bases, and I want to use that snow paint that I picked up a jar of. Right. But the idea I've got in my head as a theme for these Isthak fellas is it's largely they're bringing the ice and the snow with them wherever wherever they're marching. Mm -hmm. And I thought it might, you know, piles of snow might look really good on a green grassy ground. Right. I guess I'm nervous about trying to make the ground look realistically grassy when I don't have any green flocking or static grass or anything like that I'm just going to slap down some green contrast paint and yeah, that, laugh that um, that'll probably look a bit strange yeah and that's basically why I haven't done it yet Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, 
Yes, I would probably recommend getting some other textured paint and perhaps painting that green or getting some flock. Yeah, I was thinking the flock route. I've got got rocks. I don't have grass. Mm. You got a model train supplies relatively handy. Not really. No. I mean the internet is only a computer away. So Actually, my nearest proper hobby stores are RC cars exclusively. Right. There are two of them within 150 metres of each other on Pro the same road. Proving... Like, seriously. Yeah, proving that, that um, direct competition actually improves the marketplace. Because people will actually make the journey because they'll go, well, okay, if I go here and this people don't have it, then I can always go to them. This is why fast food places congregate. Never really thought of it that way. It's done deliberately. It's been so long since I've gone in for fast food, so I hadn't really thought about that. Yep. Though I wouldn't mind a pizza right about now. <laughs> Pizzas are only the internet away. <laughs> Domino's doesn't open until 11, though. Oh, really? Really. And I'm very upset with the local pizza hut. So, you know. <laughs> oh, you're making it difficult for yourself. Intentionally so. It's like a 30 buck delivery. <laughs> yes. Well, sad to say it, but my partner's son-in-law runs a local pizza place so if we want pizza we could have pizza cheap delivered every night of the week fortunate for me I really like it so I remember seeing this great story in the news out of Italy, or I guess five or six years ago now. Uh, family court divorce proceedings. Um, the former husband was allowed to pay his alimony in pizza exclusively. Really? Yeah, well, he was a, a pizza maker. Right, okay. So, <laughs> you know, his shop wasn't doing too well, so he was allowed to pay it in, in food and that food was pizza there you go kids probably left him for the first three months of it yes and then they ate it <laughs> forever <laughs> after yep I'll never what really caught me about that particular story though was the alt text on the stock image that accompanied that one mm -hmm. and the alt text was also the caption of the photo 
and then the caption was repeated beneath the photo anyway as part of the story <laughs> pizza is a delicious ch snack made of bread and a cheese and sauce base hey that was the caption mm. pizza dough has nothing to do with bread but that was the caption right if it makes you feel any better this was the guardian oh yeah okay fair enough yep enough sir <laughs> let's not let facts get in the way of a good story Ah, oh, the newspaper's so well edited they misspell their own headlines. Yep. And bylines. And the title. Yep. There's no point complaining about it, not in the modern world. Oh, they still do it after 150 years. Us, us grammar Nazis are not appreciated. You're familiar with the old British comedy yes minister yep there was a wonderful blink and miss blink and you'll miss it moment where hacker and sir humphrey are looking over the the 10 newspapers a record for some reason position towards the camera most prominently was a copy of the granny odd right g-r-a-n-i-a-u-d Right. It was the Guardian with a deliberate. Oh, okay. Editor. Right. It was a, the. <laughs> All of the other nine newspapers were fine and normal, but yeah, one of those little, one of those little blinking you miss it jokes. Yeah, right. It was hilarious <laughs> to me, at least. Yeah. Well, isn't that the whole reason why people watch The Simpsons? There are a lot of sight gags. Yeah. But, but blink and you miss side gags. Mm-hmm. Sneed, seed and feed. Formerly Chucks. <laughs> I'll just let you think over that one for a minute. Nope. It's gone over my head. Well, I can't say it on air anyway. Uh, so. no, fair enough. That might be too much. And here you were complaining about not making a difference and not standing out. Slap a coat of wash on it. <laughs> Back to basics. Back to basics. Or I suppose you can go over all the other ones again. Shaking so badly. I think that's fairly normal when you're trying to exert that level of fine control. Particularly when a mistake is something that is very hard to correct. Mm.
So that is super obvious now. Ordered a couple more Formula One kits too. Cool. The dangers of watching old Formula One seasons on YouTube. Oh, Formula One. I thought you said Forlorn. No, nope. Formula One. I'm thinking, okay, how is Forlorn Hope Miniatures? What are they doing advertising during Formula One? <laughs> nope. <laughs> I've only had the one cup of coffee. I'm, you know, still asleep, you know. Alrighty. Eh? <laughs> Let me get that second one in. Oh, uh, but then I'd have to get up and go upstairs. This thing is going to take hours. Uh, yeah. Why did you not realize that already? Look at all those edges you've got on there. Mm -hmm. And they're all hard edges. Should design more organic fighters for faction number three. Or oh, just put no edges on them. Or reef out all the details. This was the contention, was that they didn't have enough detail on them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. And now you're proving just how much detail there is on there, mm -hmm. and people are going to go, oh my god. Mm -hmm. You know what I think would be cool in the mm -hmm. museum scale ones? What's that? Since, since you were talking about open cockpit hatches, the thruster nozzles being mounted into onto ball joints. <laughs> yeah. And just because they look cool, how about some working ailerons? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you'd have to call them control surfaces for some reason instead of ailerons but you know out of control services and you can drill out the gun barrels yep well people could do that anyway but uh, at this scale I could do a heck of a lot more because we'd be casting these in resin not metal also not injection molded plastic which means that some of the limitations that these models are built with just don't apply anymore a lot of the difficulty i've been having is because they need to come out of a steel mold which means you can't have any underhang mm. so, yes you mentioned that once so trying to get interesting shapes within those limitations and a maximum of two pieces has been hilarious
Indeed, people really don't realize what goes into creating a design like this that needs to be commercially viable. No. And maybe if people did realize that, or were at least appreciative, then maybe people would be fairer as well. Maybe, but I don't think so. Because that behavior comes from insecurity, not rationality. Apologise for the silences. Very difficult to talk when you're holding your breath. I'm trying not to break your conversation, so when I'm talking, I'm not holding down the push to talk button. Heh, heh, to do that panel one again because it's annoying me So have you just about finished the Samsung? My ones? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, ages ago. It's just it's the basing that's got you flummoxed. Yeah, it's the basing for my um for my yes thag. Oh that's yeah, that's, that's yeah, that's right. Samsung on the brain. I know you want those cavalry. I want those cavalry. Who doesn't want six-legged cavalry? People who ride griffins, I suppose. People who have to pay for horseshoes. <laughs> so what exactly did you get with these uh, Samsung? Did you just cavalry or you get a bunch of the infantry as well mm. and did you remember your controllers I did I got a bunch of skeletons some controllers some arbites one of the ones starting with M Mushkinites. Yep. And some cavalry.
This is going to look great from six feet away. Hell yeah. Possibly even 12. I wish I hadn't misunderstood you talking about Formula One cars a few minutes ago. Why is that? Because I misheard it as forlorn. I started looking up forlorn hope miniatures. Uh oh. And I've discovered something I didn't know existed, but I desperately needed in my life. <laughs> They've got this range of ogres dressed up as conquistadors oh no way yes way and i mean 28 millimeter scale and they're 50 millimeter figures and they're ogres as conquistadors 15th century and it was just so cool i would totally play a game that had those mm-hmm is anyone listening <laughs> I guess I'm more in love with the idea of that instead of the the reality specific, well the reality and the specific sculpts I mean they're pretty good they're not super fantastic but the yeah the concept oh I love the concept mm. I don't even care what else goes into the game. Just ogres with, you know, three pound guns slung over the shoulders like rifles. Conquistador hats, stripy puffy pants. How cool, seriously. Epic. Why did I start this again? Why? Hmm. Because you wanted to show off. Ah, oh, the follies of youth. It wasn't that long ago. <sighs> You've just realised that you've got another side of the fighter to um, redo highlights on. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, it looks real good on this side. What about the. Oh, wait, it's got another side. Mm hmm. Maybe put that one up against a wall. <laughs> yeah. It's like. When they made the the film set for the Titanic, they made that what was it, one third scale or two thirds scale replica or whatever it was. They only made one side of it. And when they wanted to film everything as if they were looking at the other side of the ship, everything had to be reversed. All the name tags, all the uniforms, the whole bit. I haven't even started on the white. I'm still doing the yellow.
Can I ask a potentially painful question? Mm -hmm. What about underneath? Shh. <laughs> These things we don't speak of. But <laughs> there is actually quite a bit of detail on this. <laughs> Yeah, I caught a brief glimpse of. I think it's the other, the other one you got on the desk there as you picked it up. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, hmm. exactly. Yeah, I rather think putting the wash on the way I put the wash on was a mistake. I actually think that these things are going to have to be painted in a different manner. But um, the, uh, the panels are really starting to stand out. So. Yeah, well, exactly. Just the, spinning around like that, you can see the obvious, obvious difference. Hmm. You could potentially be all weak on this one. Never mind the other one. <laughs> yeah. We've got some demon world to get through. So this might be a multi week project. That'll be the little happy noise that tell me tells me I owe somebody some money because I just won an auction. Congrats. Thanks. Another Formula One model. Oh hell. I'd completely forgotten about it this week. What's that? At the end of Last week, a 148 uh, Challenger 3, I think it was, tank kit came in in excellent condition. It was not 
nothing is missing from it when I check the sprues. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I'm going to put that one aside and I'm going to fucking buy that myself. Yes. And you didn't. I completely forgot about it and I haven't seen it since. Hmm. One of those little ladies has come in and snapped it up. Yeah, probably. She'll be like, I can use this for modern bolt action. Did you say Chelly 2 or Chelly 3? Three? 3, I think. I said 3, I think it was a 3. That would surprise me that there would be a Challenger 3 kit out there. Unless somebody's speculating about what they're actually going to look like when they're delivered. Wouldn't surprise me. I got a 35th Challenger 2 here. Desertized. That look pretty cool. Waiting to be built. All completely on its screws. So when somebody asks you what you do on your Saturday mornings, do you truthfully answer, I watch paint dry? Not at all. I say, I have another obligation. And if they ask for details, I say, I, I hang out with a friend. It's good for the both of us. Yeah. We but both need a bit of time to decompress it on a, on a weekend, and we spend that time together. I've got to say... Knowing no details, but the essence of the week that you had, and knowing the week that I had, boy oh boy, is this necessary. I couldn't agree more. And having started this whole session in such a spectacular manner... Quite so. I'm feeling everything is okay with the world at this point. Aside from how sharp these lines are not. Well, like you said, it'll look great at 6 feet. Yeah, look, I mean... Look at that. That's amazing. <laughs> he laughs, waiting for the video to catch up. Pretty much. Yeah, there you go. Now that it is caught up, that looks great. It actually is going to look damn good from arm's distance, but only arm's distance. Well, it's not like you're going to let someone go over it with a jeweler's loop. Nope. That'd just be silly. Nobody's painting stands up to that kind of close inspection. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Do a Google search for Darren Latham. I'd rather not. I feel inadequate enough as it is. Yeah, this is the point. It's like 
between him and people like Louise Sugden and Max Fillet and even Duncan Rhodes. Feeling very inadequate. <laughs> I had thought I'd done a good job on my Di Raccoons right. until I saw them at, you know, six times real real size <laughs> sitting on the monitor. I think you did do a damn good job on those Di Raccoons. I really like them. So do I, but I'm just saying, you know, these things don't... When you're painting an 18mm scale or slightly larger... Things don't stand up to being ten times magnified. You know they don't. You need really, really fine robotic precision control for that. Yeah. Industrial manufacturing processes is what you're talking about. Well, I'm just meaning putting paint on them with robots. Mm -hmm. Which will probably be coming soon. It already is there. Huh. <sighs> I'm not talking about cheap Chinese toys. No, but I'm not talking about cheap Chinese toys either, right? So you talk, you look at the Star Wars, the X-Wing figures, right? Those X-Wing fighters. They're a twenty-dollar fighter, right? Twenty-dollar model, and I'm talking twenty US dollars each, right? So they're a seven-piece model. So they're um. They're, they're seven pieces on whatever injection molded sprue they're using. Then that sprue goes into another mold that's got cutouts. And paint is applied through the cutouts. They spray it. So, you know, the sprue goes into it, closes, you get, pssst, opens, pulled out. And then somebody at the other end of the factory gets that thing, clips the bits off the sprue and glues them together. Puts them in the box and sells them to you and me. And they are consistent, good quality, very attractive gaming pieces. The one thing they are not is cheap. I'll take your word for it. Uh, I'm not turning up any image results because of the ubiquitousness of that particular design. Fantasy Flight Games X Wing. It's very hard to tell from the awful photography on their website. I guess I meant more like, you know, not industrial scale robots, but tiny little robots with spray guns <laughs> <laughs> setting set up in a in a 360 degree rig that can reach all around and yeah like something out of science fiction movies i know you've watched a little anime have you seen ghost in the shell uh are you familiar with that franchise? I'd like to claim yes. But okay, then never mind. Nothing I'll say will make sense. Right.
like a fancy 3D printer, except mm -hmm. for paint. Yeah. You know there are 3D printers around that will print in multiple colours. Yeah, but I mean a 3D printer that isn't a 3D printer. It's just got the arms and the moving mm -hmm. bit, that sort of level precision control. Yeah. Except not what it's doing is extruding plastic. It's spraying paint out of an air gun. Mm-hmm. Like you've described every car manufacturer paint booth in existence at the moment. You were just talking about doing sure. it on a miniature scale. Yes, that. Mm -hmm. An 18 millimeter in specific. <laughs> As just, a hobbyist. I just don't not, know. Not industrial scale. Yeah, I just don't know that you'd end up with that precision. I don't think you could ever end up with that precision. Like... Well, that'll be the next big thing I'm going to predict. Okay. You've heard me say it here and now. There you go. It will be literally robots painting the Games Workshop samples. Well... I don't want to be unfair to the robots that are currently doing that. Just robots of a different type. That's it. They're real people with real feelings. Exactly. And they're talented. They're, done they're very talented. They are extremely talented. Then again, you're also extremely talented, uh, so, you know, you got that going for you. Mm. Some of those talents, I reckon, are things that I'd rather not have. Like the epic shaking of my essential tremor. if there's something that can be done for that. Mm -hmm. Cut it like off at the wrist. Oh, I was thinking something slightly less extreme, like a, a wrist brace. It's one of the things that has been discussed. Oh, they're not in reach anymore. Um, yoga blocks. You actually rest the wrist on the yoga block. So you've got that rest. I mean, you can see the way I'm bracing both hands at the moment. If you do that, actually, the reason for doing that is because the yoga box got a little bit of give, unlike the edge of the desk. And um, it actually raises it up so you're sitting a little bit more straight. I'm going to be suffering from this at the end of this because my back will be hurting, but... Um, it's actually starting to come together. The effort is paying off. Certainly true. And mind you, you could have said that for the last hour that you've been working on it. Yeah. I mean, 30 minutes ago it was yellow and white and you had the cockpit done. I think that was more likely an hour. <laughs> Well, it's... Okay, yeah, I misread the time. What's it now? Quarter to ten? It is... No, it's ten to ten. It's ten to ten. I thought it was 9.30. No. I didn't get my eyes checked. No. Hell, it's only been a year and a half since my last new pair of glasses. Mm -hmm. I went nine years. At the longest between optometrist visits and new sets of glasses and stuff. So to have a pair, a single pair of glasses last nine years, I thought was pretty epic. I did seven. Yeah, there you go. But those were contact lenses. Ah, oh, right. Eh? 
which really should have been replaced at the three year mark uh, yeah. just because of just because of what they're made out of mm -hmm. yes the family optometrist was extremely unhappy with me and I said to him well I've been living out of state all this time I haven't, <laughs> haven't mm -hmm. had a chance to come back mm -hmm. I wouldn't go to anyone else Oh, well, uh, that's okay. Never do it again. <laughs> Never work out of state again. <laughs> well, that too, probably. Yeah. Uh, Mark's a very good man. It sounds like he looks after you, which is a good thing. Very much so. Very much so. I think it's a tribute to the quality of his service and his practice that he's still going as an independent on everyone else's spec savers. Yeah. <laughs> and next week, I'll be doing the white panels. I hope that's not you misses making that clicking sound. Nope. That's someone from work. I was going to say, because if she's making clicking and stuff and sounds like that, I think you're in trouble. Yes. If it's work, I can go home. Yes. This is the continuation of a conversation that should have been finished yesterday. I was telling you that I was doing first level support because please on leave. Mm. Yeah, well, that's part of that. Have it. Oh. Have a systemic problem in one of our back office systems. And it's just time to consume me to diagnose. That's what the continuation of that conversation is. There'll be some kind of opinion into the current state of diagnosis. Just hit my halo with my head. But don't do that.
On the jobs for today, I'm going to be replacing down lights. Ah, the light bulbs that your sparky predecessor. Thank you. Mm. Sparkies. Let's just call him previous homeowner. Yes, he was an electrician, but. Sparkies are alright as long as they're not working on their own property. Mm -hmm. It's like mechanics cars. Yep. And Chippy's cabinets and furniture. And Chef's home cooking. Yep. There's something in that, I think. What's that? Doing something you really, really love as your profession and then trying to do it at home. I just think. Probably good that you're a programmer and not um, the full time professional. Um, everything else, otherwise you grow really, really sick of it. Well, you can. Um, the thing about the game stuff that we're doing is there is so many different things to do, so many different activities that it would stay fresh. Like, I reckon it would take 10 years for it to get old. Hopefully, I man. Well, it's not going to take 10 years for me to get old. I'm already there. Last couple of lines. And then we'll have to call it because I am required to do other things. Just required to do other things. Like I could literally do this all day. Literally. Literally. <laughs> You know how I said two more lines? I lied. Two more. Four lines ago. Yeah. <laughs> Just like Australia Post. <laughs> tomorrow, we promise. Tomorrow. It's always tomorrow. Or it's never tomorrow, depending on your perspective. What's wrong? Oh, just that Australia Post job made me think. I remembered some items I placed an order for in August. Right. They're actually coming DHL. Um, the thing is, is that they disappeared from tracking for about two weeks. Oh, really? One of them has finally arrived in Australia. Where were they the other from? one's still missing. Okay. 
coming from Europe or America? Uh, the United States. Mm -hmm. I placed the order. It was a two-item order. For some reason, it was split between two different manufacturing... Mm. They were manufacturer on demand items. Right. It was split between two, so I got charged for shipping twice. Both things were manufactured in the same place. Yeah, that's wrong. Yeah, between shipping and taxes, it ends up costing more than the actual items themselves. Yeah, ouch. Which I wasn't happy about, and I would have, you know, cancelled the order if I had realised that. But yeah, they both disappeared for about two weeks, and one of them's finally turned up in the tracking again, as being now in Australia. Right. Which is, you know, cool. Well, it's a better outcome than it could have been. True, true. This particular manufacturer on demand company I haven't had good luck with in the past. Hmm. Sounds like that's continuing. Well, only disappearing for two weeks isn't that bad considering that the last time it was a six week mm. and when I called him up and said hey by the way this thing that you claim to have sent out never showed up at the four week mark mm. so they sent out a replacement right the original one turned up two weeks later right did the replacement turn up well, the replacement turned up, but it also went missing for six weeks. Yeah, right. I did that. I ordered some t-shirts one day. Nine weeks later, I contacted them and said, I never got your t-shirts, and they went, oh, really sorry. They sent me another set. And uh, both sets turned up on the same day. Well, I could continue this ad infinitum. That's Potentially, um, literally. Mm. Literally. Literally. Yep. That. What do you think? It's a very attractive fighter. It's got a very nice paint job on it. I need to tone down some of that darkness on those panels, I think. Well, in the the port stern, yeah. Yeah. Just Gouge something out of it and call it battle damage. No, just I'll put a bit of um, a little bit of paint over the top of it and just well thinned paint, just lift the colour back up again. It was a mistake to wash it. I shouldn't have washed it. So lesson learned. Won't be doing that on the next one. Anyhow, I better go do something else, I suppose. <laughs> Is that the sound of his master's voice? Uh, yep. Uh, I'm on puppy duty as of now, so I shall go and fulfill my puppy obligations and then start putting some downlights in. Thanks for streaming, Tim. Yeah. Thanks. Enjoyable Thank, as always. Thanks for joining. Me. Thoroughly enjoyable morning, as usual. Um, yeah. Have a great weekend. And the same to everyone. <laughs> Talk to you all later.